Welcome to the Old World Fanatics, your Warhammer Fantasy podcast to quench your hobby thirst for all things the Old World. I'm one of your hosts, Gomo. I'm back as usual with Andrew and Josh. How's everyone? Good. So good. So so glad to be back. back. <laughs> glad to be back. We tried back. We held say. down the battens while you were gone. Did just did a pretty good job. Pretty good job. I enjoyed it. Well, Kendall helped. Kenny Sissi Kendall. Helped. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A full uh, did you get Newcastle a... episode? Yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah. Did you did you get to listen or like were you? Right yeah. Now? No. No. Oh, I listened. Cool. I listened. You consumed. Um, I like it. I did. I did. A and bit I of, bit of a little dig at Josh in there <laughs> <laughs> uh, about his painting, Bretonian. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that he take ten <laughs> years. Oh yeah, or I know. Did you? Yeah. I, was, I didn't see that dig. Josh I saw like, that. Hey, <laughs> I took that as a compliment, actually. Yeah. I was like, compliment oh, good. I'm glad dedication. someone noticed that I've been painting my Bretonians all this time. <laughs> well, they are beautiful. Uh, so they are. Good. They're good. That's always one of yes. many painting competitions. Yes. Yeah. We'll have to give that up because he's won first place or something, like, you know, for gaming, mm. what he does. <laughs> he's the true, <laughs> you're the true professional on the show. <laughs> you, you're all round yeah. 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 Yep. Cool. Guys, well, really, welcome everyone yeah. to Old World Fanatics, uh, episode 42. We are getting up there. I'm excited. I'm actually starting to think in my head, I was doing it today, like, I wonder if for our, like, f- is it 52nd episode, I guess, like the anniversary, if we could do an actual live stream audience one with people. Like, I don't know. I was just thinking that today going, man, that'd be cool to do like a stream as the podcast. And, Las uh, Vegas. We'd have to work out a time because yep. it'd be a bit weird, yep. you know. Um but anyway, Isn't that's still nice. 10 weeks away, but I'm sure we'll get there. Um, oh. That'd be around Castle, wouldn't it? Yeah, it yeah, must be. Time. I mean, well, that's when we started too, so it makes sense. Yeah. Wow. It Ten probably weeks. might be yeah. just before maybe. So maybe we'll be doing like Castle Review. I don't know. Who knows? But yeah, cool. Anyway, uh, that's that's in 10 weeks' time. Um, hello, everyone. We're just, uh, I guess, We've getting 10 through. 10 weeks to get everything painted. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Shit. I know. <laughs> Choose an army first. That's what we'll get into with the hobby. But anyway, um, yeah. we've got a, we don't have, again, we've just, we've, we've decided to do this series of hits, misses and favorites. So that's sort of our main, like we're going into movement and some pretty gnarly movement, charging, mm. stuff like that. So, you know, again, if you're first time listening to that, it's just our sort of review of after three, playing for three months. What do we, what do we like? What do we don't like? And, and stuff like that. So it's not really a, a review of the rule book, so to speak. It's more just, you know what they got right, what uh, what they missed and what our favourite parts are. So anyway, that's the main mm. part of the show. We've got a few hobby-related stuff as well as a our first real, um, I'll call it product review. So it's something that Andrew ended Ooh. up getting as well. Um, and yeah, look, I mean, we'll be open, right? We got this on a bit of a discount in order to do the review, but we'll do it, you know, we'll do it honestly. We, Andrew's filmed a little bit, so we'll play that, but then we can just have yeah. a chat about it. Um, but there will be a separate YouTube video if people want to check it out uh, and links to that product. But we'll get there in a minute, um, a bit later, just around hobby or probably after hobby. We'll just do that before we get into the main topic. Um, outside of that, I don't know if there's too much else. I know just before we get to Patreons, Josh, you went to Malaysia. How'd that go? Good trip. Oh, it was great. I mean, you... I wasn't there for a huge amount of time. I was, I was there yeah. for probably a week and a half or so. Um, uh, mainly just went to, to the, you know, back to um, Ipo in Malaysia to stay there with my partner's family and cruise around having various hawker foods that she she has one particular wonton noodle stand that she pretty much ex- goes there for lunch every day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and she misses it every all the time yeah. in Australia. She's like, can't find these wonton noodles anywhere, Josh. Yeah. <sighs> but, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it was very hot. Um, got more hobby done than you might think I did. Really? Okay. Well, that's going to be that. exciting because I know you sure. were talking about taking some stuff, which was interesting. Mm. Yeah, mm. cool. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you probably got more um, done than us. <laughs> that, would be, that would be funny. Good chance. Good chance. <laughs> Overseas and end up doing more. Oh, we'll see. We'll see. Um, uh, and yeah, and I just got back in last night. So I'm still kind of tired, but. Should yeah, be which okay. Which way does it go? Do you yeah. feel like you're, uh, you probably feel not as tired as you would have gone the other way. Is that right? No, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. it's two hours, Australia's, well, Melbourne is two hours ahead. Yeah. yeah. So for me to be 730, but 
because I was only there for a short period of time. I actually yeah. never left Australian time. Time, yeah. Like, right. Going to bed at like eight, like nine o'clock every yeah. day, <laughs> and getting up at six a.m. Yeah. Um, uh, feeding the birds. That sounds like, like my normal thing. schedule. Must be getting old. <laughs> <laughs> feeding the birds. Uh, cool. Wow, little, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, what was that? The little Robert Magpies that we that we feed. They had. I finally got all these like actual like mealworms that were like live mealworms. So she put them out for the for, the, for these songbirds every morning. <laughs> Very ridiculous. Uh, anyway, <laughs> that's good, man. I'd love to get over there. I've only gone through the airport, but yeah, it's what all that Southeast Asia. Hey, it's just so much. If you go there for obviously you go there for everything, but I mean the food as well is just uh, oh, the food, awesome. Man. Yeah, so. the food. Yeah, the curry 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 noodles every morning as well. That her auntie really loves. I got to have that every morning, and it was so good, <laughs> so good. Like really, <laughs> it was a, it was seeing the relatives and that kind of thing was good. But the food is 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 yes. the die for next level. Yeah, it's good to get a change like that. Cool. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I'm. Uh, so we're all here together this week, but I'm off next week. So um, you guys will be uh, manning the booths. Ah. Um, I'm going overseas for a sneaky Ooh. five days uh, yeah. to Bali. So. Yeah. Check that out. Uh, um, my first trip to Bali. Yeah. I've been to Indonesia, but up the other end, near Singapore, not, not this yeah. end. So I'm probably one of the only Australians that hasn't been to Bali. So uh, <laughs> I haven't been to Bali. <laughs> oh, okay, there we go. <laughs> so uh, I go, I'll go over there and visit all the other Australians that are currently over there. I guess. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, all good. Cool. Okay. Well, before we get in. Um, we like to just give a quick shout out to our patrons and uh, these awesome people who help us deliver this old world for next podcast pretty much every week week in and week out um it's basically like a, a two dollar a month tier that we've got on there that just helps pay for some of the cost of producing the, the podcast and our youtube videos and all that sort of stuff so a big big shout out to those guys and crazily i don't know what it was something in the weather we ended up yeah. getting four last week so you had to just up and down yeah. it's a bit weird um, well, so I yeah, think it looked like there was a few more than the last time I yeah, <laughs> logged on. It's weird. Like happened? we had a pause of about three weeks, which is you know it's fine. Like no one's expected to do it, but um, yep. yeah, it's just weird. I don't know if it's something that you know. I don't know who knows. I, the YouTube algorithm pushed it to more people. I have no idea. Um, but anyway, maybe it was Kenny. Kenny coming on and, and forcing people at gunpoint or something. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. bit of flair. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, a big shout out. These guys get a shout out. Plus, we've got a um, private uh, Discord channel for them. And we do occasionally, like, you know, ask them questions and polls and stuff. But yeah, really, it's just a small amount. It just helps us uh, keep this going. So yeah. a big shout out to the new four new people is David Lancaster, Tom Rasmus, and Matthew Klein. So thanks for joining us, guys. Um, Hopefully, we'll see you on some of our streams and things. Uh, but the rest of the guys who've been here for a while, we've got Thumper, Sam Allen, Matt Morris, Thomas Vavasau, Starkey King of the North. Well, when I just zoomed my screen in. Uh, Griff, Jess Tors, Wood Duck, Sean S, Josh Griffiths, Nunanawam, Matt, Daniel Broadstock, Jonathan Wengler, Gilthos, Drakonos, big fan, uh, Cameron Bloom, Elliot Mincham, Chris Turnbull, Harrison Nuzo. Man, this list is getting big. Uh, Julian Diesel, Cameron Atkinson, Richard, William Payne, Robert Z, Splotchly, Splotchy Clackerton. Splotchy That's Clack. changed because he didn't change last week. We have a theory that it's actually you, Josh, because it didn't change. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. not me. I honestly. Yeah, you, you, you look pretty splotchy, Josh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> splotchy and you've got your hands over your crotch. So yeah. yeah, what is that? With a big yeah. red sort of star. Like, like explosion or starfish. <laughs> splotchy Clackerton. Clackerton. Who knows? Mm. Uh, Andrew McAllister, Bobby Gherkin, Gumbert, Sean Ritchie, who we'll talk about in a minute, and Todd Lloyd and Chapstick. So thanks, guys. Uh, yeah, Sean came on last Friday for our Dark Elf Faction review, mm. if you haven't seen that mm. on YouTube, so go check that out. Uh, we realised he's not just wow. a high elf player, he's a pointy ear of all type. Mm. So, um, <laughs> yeah, Doubles. so Doubles. as a result, we're a buying patron. Dark Elves now. No. <laughs> just... mm. <laughs> Are you not uh, out? No, our attention deficit. To, so, we'll get into this. We'll get into this. Andrew had some other stuff to talk about last week. I don't know if you, or you would have heard it if you listened to it. But, mm-hmm. yes, no, I anyway. learned it. And when the parent left, we just went crazy. You saw it too. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool. Anyway, um, let's. Usually now we go into news, and there is zilch. As far as I know, there's been nothing. 
Crickets. Nothing? Nothing. Radio silence? The closest thing to, uh. to news isn't even news, but I was listening to a painting podcast from um, Mountain Miniatures and he was talking to the guy on the, that sometimes comes on audio with him. He's just chatting and he's like, yeah, I'm painting this stuff, but I'm also painting something off camera that you can't see yet. And I was like, ah. Oh, so I don't know. It could be 40K stuff, you know, with those guys, but I'm pretty sure he's yeah, yeah. Uh, only fantasy now. So I'm guessing he's painting up some new dwarfs. Potentially, I would hope. The carriage means, yeah, the grudge carriage. <laughs> yeah, well, well everyone's seen that, so yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, but he wouldn't be able to show like that, even you know, like so. There's the new Slayer. There's the the King on yeah, Shield yeah. bearers and stuff. So yeah, so cross our fingers if he's painting them, then everyone else is starting to get ready. So maybe we will see it at some point in the near future. Yeah. Where's, um, our, where's our bit? Have you yeah, emailed I, GW again? Asking yeah, for a, uh, not since last. I've done three emails. Channels. We're waiting. We're waiting till then. <laughs> waiting for them to contact us, Josh. They'll be coming soon. Trust me. Yeah. <laughs> playing, playing hard to get. That's yeah, that's right. Right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, We might yeah. talk about three D printing too much in this channel, and they're just <laughs> like that. Nah. Uh, anyway. I saw a funny thing actually on one of the discords that was like, um, it was a, as if it was a board meeting, like saying, and someone's like, they're not purchasing the miniatures. We're not, we're not selling at the moment. So the game's a failure. We're cancelling it. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's about right. Yeah. <laughs> why, is, yeah. why is the sales so slow, low on the, the figures we don't actually sell? <laughs> uh, anyway. Cool. Um, yeah, so yeah we'll, we'll get on yeah. a hobby in a minute. But so this isn't news, but I thought this is a weird thing. I've never done this before. Um, using my platform, yeah. if you call it this, is Ooh, there's the, there's a thing in a, it's platform. Australian mental health. Like the other day was UK, uh, the UK's mental health week or something. And I know that, you know, obviously mm -hmm. in our hobby, I'm in like um, a really big Facebook group and uh, Discord group called Dad Hammer, which is awesome. If anyone hasn't joined that and you're a dad, and you play Hammer, I'd totally like get on there. They've got a lot of good support networks for people like us who's, you know, trying to balance hobby life, balance family, all that's craziness. Um, so, yeah, obviously I feel like mental health and hobbies are big. I don't know, I think it's connected, you know what I mean? Like people do this a lot for escapism yeah. or for just, you know, keeping sane. And we're, I don't even, I don't like the idea of being escaped that much, but, you know, people do. Um but in Australia, there's a push-up challenge coming up, which I thought was pretty cool because I'm, you know, I like to run and I probably don't hit the gym as much as I should. Um, but I thought, why not just ask everyone out there in Old World Fanatics land if it's worth, I was going to sign up to it, it's free, but you can also set up teams. And so if anyone wants to check it out, you don't have to be in Australia, it's just thepushupchallenge.com.au. It's basically a, I think it's 24-day push-up challenge. Um, How many push-ups is it? Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> it's a little morbid, but basically it's 3,249 push-ups in 24 days, which equates to about 135 a day that you've got to try to do. Uh, <laughs> now, that unfortunately, that 3,249 is the amount of Australians that have already died in suicide. Oh, sorry, have died in suicide in 2022. So... Mm. Um, you know, so that's, I mean, it's pretty crazy numbers, but, mm. um, I guess that's why I picked that number, but yeah, mm. it's, uh, an interesting challenge that's going around. So I thought, why not give it a go? Um, if people are interested and I've hit up our patrons as well, just, I guess, let me know and I can set up a team and we can see what happens. See if we can get it. Maybe we can raise some money as well. I don't know. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. I thought I'd give that shout out while I've while people are listening to me. Do they, oh, do they have idea. to be a um a Patreon to sign up to the team? No, no, nah, not at all. I don't think oh. so. So yeah, just talk to us. I don't and, know, um, should. <laughs> yeah, you could as well. Yeah. So anyway, we'll uh we'll give that a go. Um yeah. I'll, I'll let you guys know, I guess, in the next, because it doesn't start till next week, although I'm away next week. So maybe I'll uh, I'll send some messages out over the YouTubes and all that sort of stuff mm. uh, when, you know, how to actually get involved. So, yeah, uh, keep keep a tab on our socials uh, as we're doing it. And uh, if you want to get involved, let us know. Outside of yeah, that, Vince. hobby, let's get on to some mm -hmm. hobby. Uh, who wants to go first? Because well, Andrew we go, um... probably has last stuff. So maybe we should go with one of us, Josh. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, with the is there any update with the tournaments and that kind of thing before we go into hobby? Mm. 
Um, you guys actually going I, to Belcon too? Yeah, so I haven't actually updated this because there wasn't massive change. Um, as far as I know, and it might be wrong by the time people hear this, Belcon 2 has been announced, the player pack's out, but not the registration link. I hope not because otherwise I'd miss out. It's pretty small um, uh, tournament. There's not many that. places. Um, and Belcon's in Canberra, uh, Canberra by people, who are people listening. It's a small tournament on the 29th and 30th of June. Andrew and I are hoping to get down there. And Ben said he'd message us when he knows straight away what the link is so we can try to get in. But I haven't heard anything, at least today, mm. which is Monday yeah. night recording time. Yeah, right. But you guys yeah. are keen to go if you can sign up. Yeah, I booked a yes. accommodation and everything. I mean, I can cancel it, so it's not a problem. But Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, cool. Yep, yep. No, um, I'm at, and I'm going down to Gathering Darkness now. I think, yes, yeah, since last time I've been on, they did open it up from 20 to 30 players. Um, Gathering right, Darkness. Cool. Um, in where is it again? Limbrook, that's right, south southeastern Melbourne. Um, and yeah, so I got a so I got a ticket. Um, uh, uh, got you know, got it signed up while I was overseas, so I was like, you yeah, know, okay, oh, I can cool, do that. Awesome. <laughs> Um, and Maybe. I think they're actually using Best Coast pairings. Um, oh, okay. Awesome. Yeah. And that type of thing. So, yeah. Maybe while we're going or when one's talking, one of us can try to get to the uh, the Belcon pack link and see if there is if it has opened up or not. But, I mean, I'm assuming it hasn't. I don't know. Um, yeah. It's annoying for me because I just can't do any other weekend because of like, other weird stuff and work and travel yeah, and yeah, stuff. So, like, I would try go. They've got a, a Goulburn one day yeah, on, the, on that weekend that, gathering darkness is on which is even closer to me and andrew but i won't be able to do that um because i'm not here uh, <laughs> so it's like ah, on the 6th of july yeah, yeah. Right. yeah anyway yeah. here's what it is yeah yeah all right, all right. um we're we gonna do hobby time yeah yeah I'm, I'm frustrated because i took these pictures today of my hobby and i forgot to download them onto onto the computer so I'm now trying to <laughs> frantically download them and it's not working. Ah, it's okay. I don't, I've got one. I didn't actually take pictures of one, but I did do a YouTube channel today, a hobby yeah. hour today. So I've got a screenshot from hour. that. A screenshot. <laughs> we'll just talk, talk about it. I'll let you go, Josh, because I've been rambling for 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll go. Um, yeah. So really most of my hobby time comprised of while I was overseas. Um, now I actually did get, not like a massive amount done, but uh, I really just worked on my arches, my Bretonian arches. I got, I got, I got a the metal decent, ones. Sorry, they, yeah, these like are the Claymore the, castings. Yeah, cool, yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah, there's like twenty four of them, I guess, and two of them are like guys trying to mount a horse, <laughs> which I think are really cool. <laughs> um, uh, and uh, yeah, so I've. I basically I packed up a bunch of, of, of my hobby gear, um, yeah. put in the suitcase. I had to, the, the the hard thing with doing this kind of thing is it's, it feels knowing, dangerous. Yeah, <laughs> like paint <laughs> dangerous. <laughs> paint wise, just well, in terms bag of, or something. In terms of it like exploding. In yeah, the, yeah in I don't the know. Journey in the plane been... over. Okay, yeah. well I did think about that. So I did. Oh, I I put them in a, a ziploc bag, like oh, yeah. sealed, so that in theory. The pressure from like you should get a bit of more equalization of pressure, I guess, in inside the bag, and therefore less less you know pull on the on the pots. And most yeah. of the pots are bottles. You know, I did take yeah. a couple of of like the Citadel paints ones that are just the old crappy flip top things. Um, but most of the rest of them are bottles. Um, the hard thing is for me is is not working out. Okay, what which paints do I take? <laughs> it's, mm. it's like. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't actually. That's the thing. Like I was knew I, I knew I was going to paint these these arches, but I hadn't actually test painted a model, so I didn't actually have a recipe in my head about yeah. what paint I needed. <laughs> and I hadn't. I've done this before, right? So last year I did go to Malaysia, and I and I do just take some st stuff to paint because you know because I'm just sort of visiting family. It's not really a tourist trip. You know, yeah. there's a lot of time we're just sort of not doing very much. Um, mm. So it actually it actually does work out to be a pretty good period for hobby <laughs> in a way. Yeah, yeah. Like, well, just spend, spend an afternoon like painting. Christmases and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. So I probably, yeah, probably, yeah, three or four 
days, like afternoons, that I would do in a couple of hours, I guess. Um, yeah. And I and I done um, like a unit of of men at arms last year. So that was that was for uprising the six head tournament uprising last year. I did that. Did just a, a bunch of of halberdiers, but I hadn't actually written down the the um, the recipe I used for them. Uh, so I ended up I found I'd written down the recipe that I used for my uh, war master Bretonian arches. So I, I just basically wow. said, oh yeah I'll take I'll take some of those paints. I usually yeah. write it down, guys. Like that's the thing. Like yeah. you don't write well, down do, what yeah, you use. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. You can't. You can't. It's it just. It's just like I. I can't remember how I painted this. <laughs> this <laughs> sock. You know. So it's. Yeah, yeah. It's really important. But so yeah, I, I managed to use that and then grabbed a few other paints. Um, and in my head, I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll just paint them all through yellow and blue livery because I felt like that was um, going to be what most of the army is going to be. Unfortunately, when I got when I got there and I was doing one unit, I was like, oh wait, I probably do want to have the other unit a different color, like a different livery, like a white and red. Um, but I hadn't taken any red, so I hadn't actually thought about <laughs> that, which is slightly annoying. So I couldn't do that part of it, but I did yeah. as much as I could with the rest of it. Um, and fortunately, I'd brought enough other whites um, and other shades that I could do the white part of that livery. Um, uh, but yeah, so it. Um, the other thing with with painting up there is that it's a very it's different hot. climate. Yeah, it's really hot. <laughs> <laughs> really, really hot. Yeah. But I don't often paint in the hot weather. In painting, mm. usually in, a, in an air-conditioned bedroom, um, because otherwise you're just sweating and it's just uncomfortable. Yeah. Mm. Which actually still does change your your your, um, your paint sort of st- like the effects on the wet palette and that kind of thing. Because because it, it's a heavily air-conditioned bedroom, everything dries really dries quickly. Right like the, out. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. Like I find yeah when I'm painting, the paint on the model dries fast. I don't have to wait that long for the shades to dry even. Um, uh, I have to f- fill the wet palette quite often, you know, as, oh. as well. It doesn't it doesn't affect too much like the actual technical things as long as you're sort of aware of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just funny how um, just these little things can, you know, really affect sometimes what you're thinking about. <laughs> well, it's funny, like just in general though. Like, I mean, obviously, our temperature and especially where you are as well, it's not as bad. But um, when you do hear a lot of the content coming out of like UK and America, like North America at least, it's often it's always about, oh, you know, it, you know, don't spray because, you know, you only got those sort of t- time of the day to spray because it's really cold and it's all yeah. talking about being cold and then we're like, yeah. we're the opposite. Like even someone said that to me about the 3D printing the other day, something about, oh, you got to be careful because the resin can like, has to be warm enough otherwise like and stuff like that. I'm like, I don't think we have that problem. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. like if it's not yeah. going to get that cold that it's going to, like here that it has a problem in the garage like i wouldn't yeah um, yeah even even down here like because melbourne does get kind of cold overnight yeah, especially yeah, in winter, yeah. and arguably it does get down to that range i still print as normal no mm. fi- no heater it's just outside in the shed i've yeah. never really had any problem yeah it's yeah. not freezing temperatures it's like it's like two or three degrees but yeah <laughs> still yeah. like yeah, but um, well, we'd be lucky yeah. to get that occasionally. Most time it'd be like six yeah. or something, I'd imagine. Mm. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, um, I'll throw this up. Uh, so, yeah, this is my little setup. So, I've got my pot. I've got, nice. I ended up taking about 20 or 30 paints. So, like, it adds up, guys. It really yeah, adds yeah, up. When, yeah. you, when you start getting out paints, you go, no, I'm going to need this. I'm going to need that. I'm going to need that. I'm going to need that one, that one, that one, that one. Yeah. <laughs> With a big pack of paints. Uh, but I've got my little. um uh, the wet palette, so I just use an old, yeah, that's a good idea, just an old pencil, pencil one, yeah, true, yeah, that I found for free from yeah. an art shop. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, have I got my light in there? No, I don't have my light on there. Oh, yeah, I've got a so I basically just had to pack my light and everything, and yeah, it works, it works fine. It's just, good. it's just, mm. it's just, it's just a really mind fuck when you have to just think up everything yeah. you want ahead of time because you know that if you don't bring something and you need it, you'll just, you'll either have and, to work out a substitute yeah yeah like what's you where you go to i mean i'm guessing there's no it's not the place where there's just hobby stores no yeah, yeah. no there's no there's no gw there's no warhammer <laughs> yeah stores, but i mean so even just hobby stores. stores like you know i can like you know if you go to the uk you go to america or something obviously if you forget something most of the time you can probably find it you know in a yeah, city yeah. somewhere um but yeah when you go into some other places not so much yeah in Yippo. It's a pretty small town that really, 
I couldn't really find. I didn't look that hard. I must admit, the only time I've been in a hobby store in Malaysia was well, previous. I went there in in KL in Kuala Lumpur. Yeah. Kuala Lumpur. There was did go to a hobby store, and I think that was early on in Age of Sigma because I remember seeing all these rebox triads there, and I'm like, oh wow, they've, they've reboxed all these triads. These are these are pretty <laughs> either triads, and now they're reboxing. Yeah. Um, so that, that was kind of cool though, see, see, seeing that. But yeah, unfortunately, it's it's not not very common, and yeah, there's not really not much um, easily accessible hobby stuff. Um, also, because I don't have a car, I also have didn't arrange yeah. my international driving license or anything like that. I've got no. Oh yeah, yeah, and yeah. <laughs> I feel like yeah, trying yeah. to recruit Bring what you got into other other fa- other um, <laughs> in-law family members to drive me to a hobby store would be yeah. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so yeah, I just I just made do with with what I had. Um, oh yeah, but yeah, so I ended up painting. I probably did three quarters of one unit and then probably a quarter of the other unit. You know, in over a week, I think that's not too bad. I have to. So I basically I want to try to get these arches done. I'm going to start printing off a few more sort of grass tufts and that type of thing. Has your yeah. has your three D printer arrived, Gomo? Nah, well, nah, because I mean it, it said June, like it said oh, like June. Okay. So I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to show you the, the some of those basing stuff because they're really good. Um, so I'm going to paint off, print off some of those to, to base them up a bit, um, and then I've got to I've got to crack on through and get the rest of the peg knights done. Maybe a green knight and the the lord on peg done. Hopefully, get them mostly painted up for the gathering darkness. Or gathering darkness. Yeah, yeah. I also I hopeful of trying to get a second unit of. Knights of the Realm done in time for Cast of the Salt, like a fifth ed theme one. I've got a six ed one, but I'm not really happy with it. So I'm hoping of just doing a whole new fifth ed themed um, Knights of the Realm using classic sort of uh, the Questing Knight or the the old Knights of the Realm metals um, mm. in it. So hopefully I can get that. I don't know. It's a fairly big endeavor to do a mm. whole unit of, of eight. I mean, it doesn't sound like many, but when you're doing all the barding and, and all that, yeah. all the little patterns and stuff, it takes it it's does take, take a while. You a bit, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so, nothing like a tournament to get you motivated to do it, I guess. <laughs> yeah, oh, indeed. Well, we, we just lost Andrew. Um, he'll be back. Okay. Yeah, he'll be, he'll be back shortly. Um, yeah. Oh, that's some... right. The other the other thing I had done. Um, was because we actually have the slow grow this weekend, right? Yep. Um, this is, so, what are you up to now with that one? Six sixteen hundred. Sixteen hundred. Up to. Okay. Yep. Um. So yeah, that's that's this weekend, and I've got a. I have done a little um scenario for that. Where is my? Oh, yeah. I love these scenarios. <laughs> <laughs> Another one. <laughs> Another one. Um, so this is sort of like an ambushing style one I've tried to do. Uh, so I will stop screen, present, share screen. So, and I'm sort of, because of what I've been thinking about with the um, campaign, um, trying to add smaller units, like, small, like la- la- last month there was like a flanking force, which is 500 points. This time it's like a ambushing force coming from the, coming from the rear. Um, All right, yeah. Oh, no, this is... Is this the old one? Oh, that's, oh, one. that's Sorry, fog. Yeah. No, 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 that's the fog one. Yeah, ah, I had that one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why that hasn't come up. Um, uh, but yeah, I'll I'll just go through it with it. So it's 1,600 points, but you, you select part of the 1,600 would be a 500-point sort of uh, ambushing unit. And the deployment yeah. is a diagonal deployment where you're six, inch, six inches from the center of the, of the um, deployment line. But I have put a rule in saying you can't be within... 18 inches of an enemy unit when you're deploying. Yeah, um, it's, it's sort of that old school where you can do one up and then someone pushes the other one back. Is that what you mean? You know, yeah, like yeah. In eighth, was it, or whatever you do that? I can't remember what mission it was. Maybe it was that one. Yeah, I think. Or maybe um, that was ninth. I think it might have been ninth age. I yeah, think. it might have been. Um, yeah. Hold on, I'll see if I can, if I can do this again. Uh, Sorry, audio, audio, audio podcasters. We're filling with our screen shares. There we go. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, not yeah. the I best know, know. system to bring it up on this tool. But anyway. No, no. Yeah, well, I wasn't prepared. <laughs> um, uh, so basically, yeah, you've got the diagonal deployment. Can you zoom it in a bit, Josh, or not on that? Is it not zoomed in enough? Uh, oh, it's a brat. No. No, just leave it there. That's cool. Yeah. Yep. 
Um, uh, and then basically, once you deploy the main force, which would be about 1100 points, um, you know, you, you start playing, and then on the second turn, each player rolls on a three up. The ambushing force comes in, and it's within 12 inches of the opposite corner of their. Of yeah, where, where, it's where that red is on that map. Okay. Cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, if, if they roll a one or two, it's, they automatically come in on turn three. So, you know, it's like yeah. it's either going to be turn two or yeah. three. Um, yeah. And when they come on, they can charge, they can march, you know, they can pretty much <laughs> enter the game. <laughs> That's yeah. cool. So, yeah, I, I don't know. It'll be interesting. Um, I have mm. put in a little extra thing about a, a golden sand and such where the most expensive unit in the main force, um, uh, their standard is worth 300 victory points that, instead of the normal two, 100. Um, yeah. And, but all units... Or friendly units within six inches of it can re-roll failed panic checks, you know, as a as a thing. Um because the fluff of this one is basically like, you know, they've been trying the, the troops are trying to come home, they've got through the fog and the bog that we had last time, uh, but they've come back and uh the town has been ransacked by the owners of the mystic monolith that got destroyed. Oh. Um and they're and they're waiting for you, so they're ambushing. So that's sort of yeah. the fluff that I've been trying to do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, so, you know, interesting to see how the ambushing stuff goes. Because, yeah, this is the type of thing that, you know, I'll be trying to incorporate a little bit in the campaign, you know, um, yeah. maybe trying to have elements of, you know, smaller um, detachments come on different later periods of the game and that type of thing. But, yeah, so we've got That's going to be funny because, like, it's it's pretty much going to guarantee that there's, like, enemy unit, like, a, you know, mostly an army, mostly another army, and then more enemy. Like, it's just going to be this bit... Mission. Yeah, yeah, it's it's going to be of, like yeah, four lines of yeah, troops basically. Yeah. <laughs> there's, fortunately, there's no beast men in the slow groves because mm. that's probably right. the only army that would probably yeah. get a bit of like it doesn't yes. quite work, you know, because they're so they're relying on ambushing anyway. Um, yeah, uh, but yeah, in in the in the context of the slow grow, I think this this scenario should be yeah crazy. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty yeah, cool. you got, you've probably good. got just enough time. And the thing with the diagonal deployment is it gives you more space between the lines as well, yeah. you know, so you yeah. can get right up. And they're quite close deployments being only 18 inches apart. Um, uh, so, you know, it gives you a couple of turns that you can try and get further away from the rear or you can try and turn yeah. around a face or you can yeah, yeah. Sort of you, try yeah, to work out what you want to do. Yeah. Mm. Oh, cool, man. Now, well, let us know how that went. Well, I'll listen to how that goes because I won't be on next week. Oh, so yes, be better cool. be better be listening. <laughs> Just like I was listening hopefully. last week when yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was hearing much many tales of beastmen and Bretonians being mm. bought. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, so and, that was interesting. And, and I can't believe this, by the way. You mm. were like, oh, Josh is probably shaking his head right now. And you were. And I was literally shaking my head as you said it. <laughs> <laughs> These two idiots. <laughs> Did you only see what we talk about? You don't see the DMs, the direct messages of me trying to get Andrew to buy us. Just buy it. Just buy it. <laughs> just buy it. <laughs> I don't need a little demon on my shoulder. I got gummo. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, I, um, I'll go so then we can sort of just merge fluently into the the paint rack uh, review, which I, I just spoiled, not that it was a secret, uh, that Andrew will do. Um, oh, yeah, I have been going through. So, I mean, I do have skeletons, 60 skeletons to paint, which I am actually just slowly going through, but because I want to get orcs up and running to play at least on battle reports and maybe take to castle because that's a decision I'm still trying to work out. I have been working on them for the last week and a half just replacing all the bases and I've done all that now and so now what I'm doing which I just streamed today uh, and didn't take other pictures so you can just see my head and, and what I'm trying to do with my night gloves. they're all in 25 25s and I'm just um adding I've got a bunch of like the little resin which is what I'm excited to do with the printer it's printing out all these little base you know like mushrooms and fungus and yeah, stuff. so the best I've got the them printer. on there and now I'm just basing them and contrast painting them and then I'll flock and um put a few tufts on and they'll be done so I'll probably do that this week. We'll have another couple of hobby sessions and yeah. the, orc, the black orcs and the night goblins will be done. Um, depending on the list, it will depend on what I want. need to paint next for orcs. Like if I take two giants, I need to paint one of my giants. I've got them. I just need – and it's just stuff like that. So it'd just be – the good thing is I'll be able to run an orc army without having to do a lot, you know, so they'll be all mm. based properly. 
What are you going to take Wood Elves to Castle Assault? So that's the next discussion. <laughs> <laughs> that was just spoiler a alert. Train Sunday <laughs> night thinking. Um, so yeah, then I bought Beastmen last week, uh, which I think we did talk about. So they they've all arrived and they're here. Um, arrived. Right. Yeah, at least right, the two guys. Vanguard boxes. But that, it's you know, and Andrew and I started talking about um, how we're going to like because we we we'll probably work on them together. So I guess that's what we'll try to do. Mm. But. Um, once the printer's yeah, in, that... we can print all the other bits, um, but mm. we'll try and paint the army up together and work out, you know, who's best to do what. I think Andrew already volunteered to actually put them all together, which would be pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, I'll put them, I'll put them all together. Go does the rest. That would be fair uh, to I putting mean, them together. I sort of understand. Paint. Yeah. Because mm. it's more about getting more armies to... To have battle reports with and that type yeah. of thing. Well, this well, one is the basement, is yeah, yeah. Yes. And so this was yeah. an uh, what we were thinking is like coming up with something where um, it's quite easy to to speed paint them up. Do you know what I mean? Whether or not that's airbrushing or like with a bit of speed paint as well, like contrast or whatever. So they won't mm. be um, like we could do it in two passes. The first pass could be just good enough to play, and then if one of us likes them, we can spend more time to you know pretty them up. But um, yeah, the yeah. beastmen, how pretty do they need to be? You know. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, there's that, and then uh, you know that'll be this week, really. But I did start. I do have wood elves, and I'm, they're sitting there. And then I was playing around with some lists on the weekend, and I'm like, <laughs> I could use castles as an excuse to get them painted, you know? Because um, yeah. if I'm taking orcs and tomb kings, there's not a lot to paint in the next three months because they would just be depending on the list. It'll just be fiddling around, you know, paint a giant or paint my second casket, stuff like that, which is good. Um, but if I want to actually use it as an excuse to paint something in three months, then I could take Wood Elves, but I don't know. They're probably too hard to play. You need to be a good player. Mm. So I'd, I'd rather just push something across the board. So anyway, that's what that's what's coming well, up. Well, it depends what you want to play. Yeah. On, I'm going to do live list reviews uh, and list building with the Patreons or listeners. So we'll start that this week. I'll yeah. maybe I'll do one this week. Uh, maybe a Tomb King one, and we'll try to come up with a fun Tomb King mm. army for Castle. And then I'll do an Orc one, and I'll do a maybe a Demon one too, and then maybe a Wood Elf one. And then we're going to have a decision of what I'm going to do. Yeah. So maybe I by the end of the week after I get back. I'll have to make a decision pretty quick because <laughs> yeah. if I do choose wood elves, I better get painting. So, how about how many? Bush, do you have any painted wood elves? Like how 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 at what point would you be starting from zero? Pretty starting, much, there. I've got a lot that I undercoded, okay. but it'd be oh. zero. But I mean, the reality is, like I add. Then this is what got me thinking about it. When you add a dragon and a treeman, and then three units of like glade riders or something or equivalent. Um, there's not a lot. There's not. There's not that many figures. You know, like it's actually quite small. It is a small army. They yeah, are and you're right. Yeah, if you add in a dragon and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. No. I... Yeah. So cool. it just depends on if I could be bothered or not. I don't know. Like, and I don't know. There's one. I'm thinking about castle. Like, there's a lot of unit strength ten stuff. So I started thinking about well, what armies do I have that are like. Like cavalry, just I don't know if it's the right thing to think about. But I'm like, is cav a good option for? For castle assault because you're moving quick and you 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 know your unit strength two at least um, you know like so five or six or seven in the unit is giving you you know a couple of casualties you can take um, and still be above you at unit strength ten mm -hmm. to capture table quarters and all the other stuff yeah there. yeah I guess I mean you put a lot of thought into this. Yeah, but then uh, and, talking, and <laughs> talking to Dilthos <laughs> and stuff on Discord, I was like, actually, but uh, skeleton horse archers are already that, and I can heal them back as well. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Just have a heap of them running around, and they've got reserve moves. So, you know. Yeah. yeah. It's probably going to be Tomb Kings, let's be honest, but if not, it'll be Orcs. But I just think there's going to be a lot of Orcs. Oh, there'll be a lot of Tomb Kings too, I guess. I don't know. That's to be decided. Yeah. 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 Fair enough. Cool. I, mean, I need to I need to get my list up on have it reviewed too. I don't I don't even know if it's any good or not. Because you've already list. have you you've mostly worked it out, eh? That's what you've been painting, like the second unit of pegs and well, actually two units yeah. of pegs really, because you're keeping them separate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah oh, it'll be right. Well, you can you'll be doing a Britannian review coming up soon, so yeah, mm. you'll know if yeah. it's good or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like how we surprise all our patrons with with the poll about uh, you know which 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 uh, faction we got in next, and the Bretonians came up the top, and then 
Didn't Dark did. Elf. Surprise, Dark Elf. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we did talk about that with him and just said, like, That's yeah, my fault, though. It, it makes sense fault. that you do the Bretoni one. I went over, so we, I went over we to squished the, you know, <laughs> didn't want him to wait too long. So we did the uh, Dark Elf one. Well, yeah, and Andrew, what have you been up to? Well, sorry, I've in the background, I've been all quiet. I've been trying to sort out these bloody um, pictures. I did get them. So, anyway, um, Something that was very non-Andrew is I actually did a reasonable amount of hobby um, this last week. So I'll probably start off uh, with the non-pitcher component. Um, been getting pretty excited trying to find a viable Skaven list um, and talking to Kendall uh, last week about Skaven sort of got me a bit, you know, some juices mm. flowing. And anyway, I've I got like a gazillion skaven models are still got to put together um so i started putting some rat ogres together uh, i've got four of them from the island blood set put together out of my total of 16 or something stupid i got a heap ages ago when they were quite cheap um and i've got uh two characters together um I'm not a very good Skaven player because I don't know their names, but I think it's Queek, Headtaker, um, the mm. assassin e kind of guy, but he's got armor. Um, and Or he's got... Actually, I don't I don't think he's an assassin. He's just... No, the yeah. assassin is... Um, oh, man, man, my Snitch. brain's not working. Death Masters. Yeah, yeah Death Masters. Yeah, yeah, so at least yeah. That's the one I know. I don't... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then I've got... Uh, oh... Everyone's gonna hate me. I completely forgot his name. He was on uh Bone Bone Yeah, Thangrul. Thang Thangrul, yeah. Thangrul and Thankful. 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 Yeah. Bone Thankful. Ripper or whatever his name is. Bone yeah. Ripper, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What what am I? It's like it's like a premier. It's been a while. Character. I mean it died. The whole premier game character. Died, so. I can't even <laughs> it's gone out of our heads. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I should know mm. it because I, I like the um the Gotrick uh books mm. and he's in that quite a lot. Um and he's yeah. got his own standalone book, I think, as well. Yeah. Um Anyway, so I've I've been doing them, and then I did a heap of rebasing. Um, so I'm sure as any any of the guys at home, um, and well probably girls as well, could attest to. I, I had a bit of some chores on Saturday, some home duties I had to do. You know, a bit of cleaning up, a bit of vacuuming, this and that. Um, I said, oh yeah, I'll I'll get it done once I finish my just finishing off some hobby. So. <laughs> Try, Priorities. <laughs> try to procrastinate from doing chores. I ended up doing quite an extension of hobby. And um, I got a heap of my dwarfs rebase because I remember I sent you guys the um, mm. the quarrelers and then I finished them up. And then I was like, oh, I'll finish up all my warriors at a rebase the other day as well. So I've done 60 oh, odd models. Um, yeah. And yeah, I've, I've got this picture up of the. They've come up pretty good with this uh, base ready. Yeah, the um, New Zealand one, isn't it? Mm. Where's this window? Fields of New Zealand. Yeah, fields of New Zealand. Mm. Be perfect for Lord of the Rings Is that figures. Ah, uh, yep. Ah, uh, yep. Just gonna click. Sort of on. Add. Not there. Yeah. Yep. Oh. Yep. That's it. Sweet. So mm. that's that. Sorry, it just popped up that's on my good. whole screen. I was like, yeah. So yeah. that worked out quite well. Um, I kind of like it. Uh, it's a good mix like of flock and undergrowth and rocks and stuff, isn't it? A bit greenish. Yeah. yeah. If people Funnily listen, enough, yeah. I don't know if um, Josh, have you got this one as well? Yeah. Did you did you add a bit more? Own. Yeah. Did you add a bit more greenery? Because it's quite, there is quite sandy, rocky. Um, and like there's a bit of greenery, but it's, can be a little bit sparse, I think, with the ah, okay. like maybe a yeah, yeah. I definitely, I think when I was using it, I did use it only sort of partially, I guess I'd say. Mm, and yeah, yeah, you're right because yeah, it is like it is a very first layer of ground cover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then either add accents to it or just use it as part of a mix, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Mm. There's not you can really play around with it a lot, or just you you know just put dabs of glue and use that in those bits and then yeah that's what i've done with my things, you know, like, orcs with their base ready um, stuff because i haven't covered the whole base with them but yeah but you could yeah, you yeah. totally can yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. just depends on what what sort of look you're going for and how dry you yeah. want it to be yeah 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 but 
That's good. Yeah, I was sort of, I, was, I thought that was quite a bit mountainous. Um, mm. So it sort of fits in with the dwarf theme. But yeah. Yeah, no, I think it looked good. And it sort of yeah, if you're going for mountainous, I think that's, uh, yeah. that's fine. Mm. So yeah, it's pretty, pretty happy with my weekly achievement. Cool. Do you want me to quickly play a video then? Oh, video then discuss? Yeah, do you want to do that? Just for so sure. for audio listeners, I'm not sure if I'll pipe this in. Uh, so anyway, Andrew's done a review. It'll be on YouTube if you want to go check it out. Of mm. basically, Patchy Hobbies is a, um, I guess they're Australian, I guess, but I don't know if yep. it's that big yet. Um, making, and I'm assuming it's made of MDF, is it? Yeah, uh, it yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, like paint racks, painted, uh, yeah, three different painted sizes, MDF. um, and so we got hold of one. Uh, if you do like it, I'll, so I'll play its three minute video for the YouTube people, but for the audio people, we'll just come back and have a, a bit of a chat about it, and you can probably just, if you're listening to an audio, you'll understand what we're talking about. But if you do want to actually look at it, <clears throat> probably better just to um jump over to the YouTube channel. I'll put it separate. So it's <clears throat> sorry, easier to find. Uh, if you do want to get one, obviously, you know, we do have an affiliate link with them. So obviously, you know, if you're an old world fanatic listener, go through that link instead, because it helps the show. So yeah, but, yeah they're good, um, good product, and you yeah. needed a paint rack. So we ended up, yeah, yeah. so I'll throw it up. Um, and then we can have a chat about what you liked about it, man. Hey people, it's Andrew here from old world fanatics. How you going? I uh, hope you have a pretty good day. Probably wondering right now, why am I looking at a paint stand? Well, as part of getting back into the hobby, I thought, you know what? I really need to revitalize my hobby space because um, it's an absolute shambles. Uh, part, of that, part of the biggest problem is I've just got paint pots just in random containers all over the shop. So I thought, you know what? The first bit I need to do is I need to get a decent uh, paint stand uh, for my pots. I uh, did a little bit of research, a bit of looking around, and a uh, bit of a local mob, uh, Patchy Hobbies. We've actually got a pretty good selection of uh, paint stands. So I went for the Maxi, the big boy. Um, so 20 per row. So you got 140 spots for your paints. Um, you slap it together. Basically, it's all pressed to fit. It actually fits in really, really well. I was a little bit concerned about um, how it was going to go. But basically, you can still lift it up. And it's in there tight enough where it's not falling apart. But if you need to break it down, you can move it around. Probably one of the best things about it. If you didn't want to move it around, hey, you could always use a bit of PVA. And um, I reckon she'll be pretty solid with that PVA. Um, pretty much won't be moving it for life. But at the moment, yep, it's very solidly put together. Um, it didn't take too much um, to actually get it all together. It comes with a little instruction booklet. Um, it's a hell of a lot easier than any IKEA furniture to put together. Um, and yeah, I just like the black as well being the, it's, it's MDF. Um, you get a lot of the MDF paint racks. They come obviously in the MDF gray, ah, sorry, not gray, the, uh, the brown color that they come in. Um, these are obviously being pre-painted. So it looks, looks pretty smart. They do a bunch of different, um, for the, for the rows, you can select what you want. Um, so I've gone down cause I mainly have GW and Vallejo paints. So basically I've gone for four um, rows of the GW and then I've just gone for three of the Vallejo. Um, so you can see, obviously going in, you can fit all your standard GWs. Um, you can even get obviously your different size that aren't GW still fit in there. Um, selection of the larger Vallejo, I've got my um, airbrush thinner, that still goes in there. So yeah, it's actually really good. So it's a little tiny bit larger, which is perfect. Um, just to fit in sort of just a myriad of different sort of paints. Um, obviously with the Vallejo, they go in perfect as well. Easy to get out, easy to access. So it's a simple system, looks smart. I really like it. Does come with a drawer option if you want the drawers um, for an additional cost. I didn't opt for the drawers. Um, just for me, I, I just didn't think I was gonna use them. Um, but yeah, if you do wanna maximize your space, you can definitely get the draw add-on. Um, so yeah, if you're after a paint rack, I would definitely recommend um, checking them out. So that was Patchy Hobbies. Um, and yeah, this is the Maxi. They do a MIDI and uh, a Mini as well. So the three different sizes. So yeah, check them out. I think they're shipping internationally now. 
So anyone around the world, if you want to check them out and you're after a paints rack, uh, yeah, highly recommend them. All right, cheers, guys. Talk soon. Bye. Cool. Cool. So yeah, no, nah, man, it looked um, it looked pretty good. Um, it looked yeah. way yeah. bigger than I sort of thought it was going to be. I guess it it is big. One. It's a big boy. Yeah. It is Maxi. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This up to his name. <clears throat> I do like I was... how you get seven options or eight options, like in terms of the yeah rows. Is it seven with all the seven. different? Yeah, yeah, yeah the se- yeah seven. It was um, so the the they've got obviously the different sizes for your different companies, so you can mix and match. Most people, I'm assuming, just run one or two different types. Like, I think G Dub and Vallejo are very popular. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. So it was good. The drawers, mm. uh, I, I think they could be utilised, but I mean, at the end of the day, it's extra cost and not, it's bang yeah. for buck. I, I just didn't think I was going to use them. But if if people want to use their drawers for their extra hobby bits, um, especially if you're in a small space, uh, I, I reckon that'd be perfect. Because I've, I've got back to basics ones um, and I like mine. The only thing I'd say that I, I like this, the thing I like about this one potentially, I've not, I've not seen it in the flesh, but it feels like because it's a bit higher, it's skinnier, like it would take up less room on the desk, do you know what I mean? Whereas the back oh, to yeah, basics it is one's quite a skinny. bit like yeah. the angle's a bit sort of 45 or maybe not even yeah. that, 30. So it <clears throat> takes a bit more room, yeah. which is fine, but this mm. looks like it'd go up up the side, up the wall a bit better, which potentially. And then I did have one other thought. The one thing I do love about the uh, Back to Basics ones, which these guys don't have, so maybe Patchy Obbies can, you know, improve on this one or, or add it maybe, is like I like having like little paint paint uh, brush holders, like the little holes mm. up oh, little holes. amongst them, and then yeah. you can just hang your paint your paint brushes in there. Um, but, again, you can just drill it. wouldn't be too hard to do yeah. that anyway. you could totally just drill um, it, I guess. So... But that's yeah. the only thing when I saw that when you showed me, I went, Oh, Ben, yeah, actually I like having my paint my paintbrushes hanging like like little, little where holder. my paintbrushes <laughs> are where my paint bottles are. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, nah, it looks good, man. Um mm. I'm thinking... It was quite I was surprised because like MDF I was like some of that press to fit stuff just it's oh. it's not very um solid when you put it together. Like, it's not very mm. durable, like it's a bit wobbly, but once it's actually all together, the whole thing was it, it. Yeah, it was really, really solid. Like I could pick it up by the side and shake it around, and nothing's falling apart. Yeah, no. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah, if you did want to break it down, you can pull it all apart. Mm. So, yeah. So, so wait. So I the paint it. rack, just to describe it a bit. So it's just what is it like seven rows of of MDF covering, holding the paints, yeah. and they'd be sitting at what forty five degrees? Is it? Yeah, yeah, they are quite. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, you mean the actual paints. Yeah, they're sort of sticking out on a diagonal. Yep. Yeah. 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 So, the, yeah, mm. yeah, it is It is good. Like, deep, uh, depth-wise, look, I, I'd only be guessing, but I reckon it's about maybe 20, 25 deep um, or two. two centimeters. Well, yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah, sorry. So, t- 200, 250 mil sort of yeah. thing. But, yeah, like you said, it's quite quite high and it's got that, that steeper angle. So... Yeah, it's probably just one of those things. Mm. It's like you said, Gomo, up d- depending on your hobby space. Like if you're after something that was like slimline, this would definitely be. Mm, yeah, I mean, yeah. I have a monitor in front of mine, which is a bit annoying, but the monitor is on a stand, so I can't just lift it right up. So mm. this would be interesting. Actually, I should look at the dimensions on this because potentially um, because it's so slimline and you're not using your paints all the time, I've got like, because <clears throat> my, sorry, because my monitor's on an arm, you can actually like bring it in front of the paint rack and bring it down. So then, like, it's mm. even better. Like, this is actually a potentially interesting design. Yeah, so. I'm I'm impressed <laughs> by it really. Because yeah, because no, my mine are either. I mean, they're all back to basic stuff as well. But it's all the um, wall climbers, which are fully mm. horizontal. Yeah, um, which works really well for dropper bottles, but for Citadel pots, it doesn't work that well. Like, you, there is a design for Citadel where it, it sort of sits vertically not horizontally, mm. but then that's also limited because it depends on the size of the pot and like your bigger sort of shade pots don't really fit that well or like some mm. of the other non-standard bottles. Whereas this mm. one, as you as you had in the video showing the the airbrush thinner, um, any size bottle, as long as the, the width of it fits in it, the height yeah. doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's actually... Yeah. yeah. And yeah, you're still getting some good. efficiency of space because they're still stacking up, you know, to some extent. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks good. It was. 
It was. I think the only thing I was probably going to look at doing maybe is uh, possibly just dabbing a bit of paint on the top just for ease of knowing what your colours are. Um, but I think a lot of paint pots anyway, they can be quite recessed down, so you don't always get a clear access to the colour. Um, yeah, I see what you mean. Uh, so you reckon if they had all the GWs all in there, you'd almost not know what paint it was? Yeah, I guess. I oh, what you, mean. Yeah, you, you could. See the label still but a you'd bit, have or? to... You, you can, Thunder. yeah, you can to a certain you can degree. Tell from the color, can't you? yeah, you can. I think it's more like you just have to get used to um, I, just putting them in. in well, I'd, I'd, I mean, I Josh has yeah. been using racks way more than me, but even my yeah. ones, I, I know where they are generally. Like, I'm like, yeah, my Ricard yeah. flashes over here somewhere, and you might, like, worst case, you pick slightly the wrong one and go, oh, yeah, yeah, one, one over or something like you that. Sort of know yeah. where it yeah. is, yeah, it's not a big deal yeah. at all. I think yeah. it was really, yeah, good. you, like, you good. learn. I, the hard thing with learning is sometimes when you do get a whole bunch more paints in and then you have to sort of reconfigure it and then, then, you, then your mind is like, no, where is it now? It used to be here, but I have to have had to reconfigure it all. Oh, my shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like defragging yeah, your hard drive or something. Oh, put it in the next spot. Oh, interesting. Ah, yeah. oh, cool. Oh, well, um, that was our first sort of slightly paid placement, but I think in, in general we're actually pretty impressed with it. So cool I had to get yeah, – I, I really had to get a paint rack and – yeah, to be honest, I'm, well. yeah. I'm really I'm, happy with. with I'm impressed. Yeah. I've only seen the photos you put in the chat, but seeing the video and yeah, actually seeing how it works, yeah, mm. I can see that really, yeah, filling a hole. Yep, it's very efficient and accessible yes. way of storing the paint. Uh, Patchy awesome. hobbies, good product. Mm. Cool. Mm. Well, um, should we smash into our topic for the day, which is just our hits misses stuff? Mm. Awesome. Did you have any comments, Josh, on last week um, in terms of strategy phase or anything that you wanted to bring up or nothing that was sort of pressing? Not really. No, all good. No worries. (laughs) (laughs) There's a relatively dry section, you know. Yeah, I know. Um, It was a bit of a – oh, we did do magic as well because of that, but it was, um, you know, wasn't too bad. Mm. It's yeah. funny thing, oh, magic is weird. It's particular. like it, there's a lot of things that it hits and misses or whatever, but it's also so dependent on the laws of fine as well. Like I think that whole thing would be interesting to go through which spells we thought are good or not as well down the track. Yeah. Josh is oh, – Andrew, sorry, is somewhere. Oh, I'm still I'm still on audio. Oh, okay. Cool. Awesome. Oh, right, let's go. We're going to cover movement phase. It's basically for those following along. Uh, well, for, so just – to clarify what we do here, it's not a run through of the whole rule book by any means. It's basically from page 118 to 135, which I believe is the movement phase, movement in detail or something, charging and oddball stuff, I think it was. Um, and Kenny last week suggested a slightly controversial name for this segment. What was it? Oh, <laughs> we won't repeat your, that. Get your favourite yeah. misses. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a bit controversial. But anyway, it's hits, misses, yeah, and our favourites. That's really, <laughs> really not appropriate. <laughs> so it's, um, no, not at this time. Especially, Naughty, Ken. especially not what's going on in this country right oh, now. Oh, no. Yeah, no yeah, not, yeah. Not, oh, my God. <laughs> um, so the hits are, for people who haven't heard this segment, so hits are things that are technically new um, that we think were cool, like additions to the game, at least from, you know, what we remember as being fantasy. Um, this is a uh, things that they either did add and we didn't like, or that they probably should have added and they didn't that type of stuff. And then we just got a section called favorites, which are just, what's our favorite bits on that sort of section. It could be new stuff, could be old stuff, could be okay. you know, whatever things they kept, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, I must admit, I still don't fully understand the difference between favorites and hits, but I'll, I'll go yeah, so I it. guess, um, <laughs> and that's the thing. So I guess hits were just like trying to say it's a new thing. Like something that they've yeah. totally added into the game that was new, novel, um, but favourites could be oh. whatever. Yeah. Right, right. Oh, okay. Yeah. So favourites could be something that, you know, you're just glad they kept and you like it, um, or it could be it could be a new thing still, which in that case it's still a hit, I guess. But um, And look, it's not really that strict because I think I get these wrong half the time. Isn't it? So. I, feel like, I, feel like, I feel like I'm being set a very, very clear and strict set of rules about what can no. be a favourite. <laughs> not <laughs> really. <laughs> I don't think anyone cares. So, be a rule um, about how this works. <laughs> yeah. So with that movement, well, uh, like, and I don't know, like we usually just have one each, but sometimes we have more. Um, again, oh, I'll put heaps in. 
Yeah. Yep. So let's go with just like the movement stuff that I've got up on. What have I got up on the screen here? I've just got the movement phase, eh? Um, I'm just going to move a screen quickly so I can still see you guys. Cool. So movement phase, which is basically talking a little bit about the actual, you know, declare charges, charge moves, compulsory moves, remaining moves. They talk about the one inch rule um, and, the, and then a little bit in depth into those phases. So the declare charges, the charge reactions, charge moves, compulsory moves, remaining moves. So do you want to just start with that one? Um, is there, who wants to do a hit? Anything new that was added? Oh god! I, I just I just put all my hits in. I was, go for it. Be, hang on. Just just do one go for it. We'll just go one and one each. All right. I, did, did we have the charge bits? Yep. You can do charge. Yep. Yeah. Um. Well, I'll say the fleas as well. I don't know if flea was in part of that. Um. So hits from that was uh, a lot the disordered charge like um. Mm. I didn't really know about it, but like the other day with my game with Gomo, it seemed really unfair that you could hit my model in a charge, but you couldn't align and I couldn't realign properly. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So like in some more traditional fantasy bases, you just, you couldn't really get Battle the combat. Charge. Yeah, yeah. 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 Which to me is just like ridiculous. So that, yeah. that just seems really fantastic that like worse comes to worse, you can kind of just align the best you can yeah um yeah, and then worse comes to worse those. it's just a the initiative bonus so it's like well, yeah 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 it almost um, feels like there's more leeway into getting into combat and that's even including like some and yeah. i can't remember exactly if it's in this section but you know like it's talking about like the i think it is the accidental contact yeah. area where it's like well look if something's slightly in your way just try and nudge it out of the way like it's a yeah. little bit obviously yeah. it makes it a bit hard tournament wise but at the same time yeah <clears throat> if you can tr- pretty much make the charge and, and you can roll high enough you can pretty much make the charge yeah, yeah. Not, it, you don't get pedantic with oh you know this you know, yeah this didn't right well, someone's trying to be a bit of a dick <clears throat> and not yeah yeah, yeah. so um <clears throat> i'll do my other one for in that section was the flea rules were very comprehensive i like them um they weren't like previous editions there was a bit like, six. what do you do with this? Yeah, <laughs> I wasn't going to mention. I don't know. It's a, probably a little bit still like six in some sense, I think. Oh, uh, yeah. But not just, as bad. Nah, no, it, it, bad. it discussed a lot yeah. of scenarios. It's way better than six. Like, yeah. yeah. Just in terms of the ease of working out where a fleeing unit should go. Oh, yeah, yeah. Send it, send it, people. Move away. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. And if it's through a unit, through a unit, and you, you know, if you go through an enemy what? unit, you take, you take a fair bit of damage. Yeah, I think the only thing I didn't like okay. about it, and I might be wrong on this, but uh, it, you still go around impassable, though, don't you? Is that the yep. difference? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's the weird bit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, not yeah so but you can't dress through impassable. That's, that's I know, too... but I didn't mind the bump stuff. It was just easy. <laughs> 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 they got to have a little bit of impracticality in the rules yeah, somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, but the sixth one where you had to flee around the units and stuff, and you had a it had like four like priorities you know to go through to work out what direction you're going through yeah oh, that was, it was always, it's always bit, been a bit of a headache a bit over the yeah, top yeah. To <clears throat> did anyone else have a hit from the uh the first section um that, I'm, is that still in the first section or is that oh like, that's yeah that's sort of yeah, yeah yeah that's okay we're breaking rules already it's fine we're allowed yeah. to <clears throat> I've got a got a miss for this rule book about how we're doing this thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I think well, the hit for me was I guess the the charge distance like just going back to the core rules of it, just working out how far you can charge something. Mm-hmm. You just roll two d six, you know, take yep. the highest, you know, yep. like that's. I think that's my ones. <laughs> yeah, well, he already picked the flea one. I already was going to do that one, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, um, mine, yeah, uh, that was a favorite and, for me was the, uh, it's related to that, Josh, is because it's, I guess, charge is still there, but just that, yeah, the random entity is back, but it's smaller than eighth as well. Yeah, yeah, it's so. a narrow band, isn't it? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, because the eighth was too random, it was too much. Yeah, um, especially when whereas... infra- infantry could do what, you know, bloody 17 inch charges if they're all a double six and stuff. Oh, don't remind me. <laughs> 
We're complaining about eighth again. Okay, Maybe well, we should stop oh, complaining about oh, eighth. Oh, yeah. Whoops. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, whoever you are. User one seven four one 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 one. Whatever your name is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. But yeah, no, it's a it's a narrow band enough that it feels like you're guessing the range almost. Like it's not yeah. that much different to to C said where you've got you know you were within a certain range, but you can sort of guess it. Whereas this is a similar thing where I feel like the chances of failing the 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 charge are sort of similar to your own mm. guess almost. Um, yeah, I, I like the max charge possible charge range um, dynamic as well. By the way, that they've got that in as a rule, so you, you can't necessarily be declaring. Yeah, know, unmakeable. Actually, charges. I was gonna put that. I didn't because I thought I, I agree, man. I reckon it's actually good. Uh, however, is it's everyone seems to get tripped up on it initially, eh? Hey? So it probably needs yeah. some more clarification. Better, uh, maybe I don't know. I don't know it. It makes sense once you're playing it, but I think initially everyone was like getting confused with Swift Stride and, and what does it mean and can I still change? And even on the FAQ, they didn't like, I feel like they didn't even really answer it very well, even though they answered it correctly about yeah. like max charge ranges and can you declare something outside of that? And yeah, it's just, um, but I, yeah, I like it, man, because it feels like, um, again, it's limiting the distance that the charges go off, even if you've somehow got heaps higher movement, you know, which is... Um, I like because it, it just gives you that positioning and, and it's not just straight away turn two, bang, everyone's fighting, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah. yeah. If you're, stack, you're stacking movement, unless you're stacking max charge range, it's not going to help you much more. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, bal it's a balancing factor. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, sorry. So, my favorite, my hit, I said favorite before, was that uh, it, it's yeah, just the way they changed. The hit was how they changed the um, charge range to. To that D six one, which is what I think you said. Mm. Um, I had. Uh, I'm just seeing if I had anything else in that movement section for hits. I've got other stuff in charging if we want to talk about that, as well. <clears throat> one of yeah, the other go hits. For it. Well, that just. I don't know if it's fully complete yet, but the 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 accidental contact rules. I feel like I don't remember that being really described in older editions so mm. i like that they um spelled it out a bit more and again going back to andrew's point <clears throat> just makes it you know they're doing everything possible to either let you get into combat or potentially you know like nudge out of it and stuff and not get into those weird feel bad moments um, and obviously with the whole give ground stuff i guess they had to put something in there around that um but I feel like it does cover a lot of stuff. I just think where it doesn't, it's probably more the rule book layout. But certainly there's places where this accidental contact it creeps up a lot during um, the, the ebb and flow of a normal game because of the give grounds and the, you know, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, so I like that they've spelled that out and tried to get ahead of it. Um, I, again, I don't know if they've fully done it as well as they probably could in terms of fleshing out every edge case, but... Um, I do like that there's ways to, you know, get into combat and stuff if you get touched and stuff or elect to not and things like that. Yeah. Um, which is pretty good. Um, I've got some other hits in the oddball stuff, but we'll do that later. Let's go into some bad stuff now if you want. Oh, unless, Josh, you've got some other hits in these movement and charging by the sound of it. We've done the whole section. No, I've got, I've got a miss in, in the... Um... I do have a miss. Do you want me to go through my miss? Yeah, go, my big let's fat do, miss. Let's do some big fat misses. It's probably the same as big mine. Misses. Well, it's, well, it's more in the. It's 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 just in front of the oddball stuff. It's right back at the back. Oh right. It's, okay. it's in the give, give ground and forward back order um, section. Yeah. The uh the second dot point of fall back in good order. Where the unit no, automatically no, rallies. I was there. Yeah, I know. I was just yeah. trying to find that. At the end there of its flea move, as per the you know the the yeah, later yeah. described rallying, yeah, big miss. You know, swinging a miss, oh, big miss. Yeah. That's that's three from us then. <laughs> it's like why why is it not just the same yeah. rule as give ground, but just a further distance or something? You know, yeah. like give give ground. It's very restricted in the paragraph yeah, and, above it. Like you can't yeah. do anything. You just got to move backwards uh, two inches. Yeah, um, yeah, and it's a big hole in the rules that yeah fall in that order, which should be more punishing. Yeah, it's actually less because you can re yeah. reform and do whatever you want. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I feel, I feel uh, like there's that. certainly ways to get out of combat there and stuff, or just, yeah, um, 
better align yourself even just the things like the drilled where you can suddenly become more effective you know <laughs> like because mm. you go into line and things like that so no i agree mm. it's a bit of a miss my miss uh in that sort of charging section that <laughs> was uh uh bloody wheeling and <laughs> measuring the oh. wheel <laughs> Just yeah, oh me. you and your wheeling guy. <laughs> i had that as well i had that wheel in there it just slows stuff most... down it's just yeah. awkward when you got to try and measure just a wheel for a unit it's just yeah you guys going to talk about the, the the general wheeling maneuver in the maneuver section as well or just for charging just just, to get uh, wheeling. i don't i mean it's a it's the charging bit that I don't like. It's the other yeah, bits a bit one. annoying as well, because especially now that like things like behemoths and stuff are very, you know, like you want to do it quite accurately. Otherwise you're giving people potentially advantages. You feel like you're taking advantage or taking the, you know, put, stretching the rules if you're not measuring it correctly um, for just your normal, you know, movement, especially if you're not marching and you want to like shoot magic and stuff. Um, but it's more the charging aspect. I just think it just still gets, I just, I miss, just not being able to do, yeah, closest to closest, know what the dice roll is before you throw it. And, um, but yeah. I sort of understand with the way line hammer is potentially, or how, you know, how you can do these big long bomb weird charges in eighth. Um, so maybe that's why they got rid of it. I, I don't know. Yeah. Like I, I still if, feel like that's why they had to have it in. And they need yeah. To have okay. some I was going to just say, like, was it that or because they liked, you know, sixth more where you just did it anyway? I don't know. Um, yeah, it's one of the few tempering factors for Linehammer in a way. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I did have other misses. <laughs> I don't want to be critical of the game because I love it, but um, I feel like they're no, just misses no, no, put in it terms out there. Of, yeah, they're not – there's misses in that they, they got so close to this but didn't. And it's one of the things we talked about this the other week, I think, where right at the beginning of this book they talk about defining what um, – directly towards and directly away is like you know you measure like the center to the center or whatever and like that's the mm -hmm. or the closest point to the closest point and stuff like that and then you go into charges and then they talk about um yeah where is where's the actual charge thing i have to find it you know it's like must endeavor to bring as many models a charging unit must move by the shortest route possible to reach target the charging unit you know you know all these four conditions but it at least in our games we've played, we've come into cases where we're like, well, the shortest to shortest is technically like a clip, you know, like mm. especially like single models charging each other. Um, but we don't do – generally we haven't done that. We've like faced them right on. But like it feels like the shortest path is actually, you know, the corner to corner of two, you know, say monstrous infantry oh, touching, when it's charging two, each other. Or when it's two um, single models charging each other, you mean? That kind of thing. Yeah, and it just – because it feels like it's not technically the shortest path. It's more like – and it's not this, but it's more like the, the centre of the units, like the front ranks trying to touch each other. You know, there's something like that where you're sort of forcing them to yeah. line themselves yeah. up a bit better, you know. Mm. And, um, and would so it it's a bit of a miss. Yeah, the centre because... of each unit rather than just maximising. Yeah. Yeah, like I, – I don't know. It feels like – um. You wouldn't want to fail a charge because you can't. Like I think you should be able to clip in that regard, but I think you should yeah. there should be something saying, "Hey, you got to try and get as close as the centre as possible," or something. Yeah. I don't know, or at least fully in line. Like, oh, it's if hard able to do so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's just, um, yeah, it, it's a miss because it's almost there, but they've just. I think there's something missing, like a criteria mm. missing, which mm. makes it a bit awkward in some uh, circumstances. That's all. Agree. All I had to do was rephrase the first criteria slightly and it would have been fine, Probably. I think. Yeah. Mm. Uh, is it up to me? Uh, yeah, go for it. Yeah, I don't think you've had a miss oh. yet, have you? Nah. So you guys keep pinching all my misses. Um, <laughs> so I was going to go the opposite with the max charge range because I just find it a little Ooh. bit awkward having another mm -hmm. little... Yeah, it, you've yeah. got to try and work out, like you were discussing before. I think there's the a wheeling. good reason to have it. Oh no, no, just like you got to like work out your max charge range, and you know it's just it's almost like there's just like another bit of trying to work out your max charge range versus your charge range sort of thing. So yeah, yeah. yeah. to me, it's just like it. Like, I kind of get the concept, but I don't know. To me, it was just a bit of something added where I I just didn't think it. The benefit needed. of it yeah. was needed as much. Um, 
I don't know. Maybe there is, like you said, Josh, people trying to, you know, put on movement buffs and whatnot to try and maximize things. But yeah, I just thought for me, it was like, oh, just, it is just confusing. Added I like annoyance. people have questioned it certainly in yeah. some circumstances. So it does make you wonder if it was just easy, just leaving it out. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, the other one, well, I've got two more. We'll see how we go, but the being able to shoot after your rally and pretty much move however you want to mm-hmm. is pretty annoying. Like it's almost like there's like, if you had like feign fight or something like that, I could see that, but, um, I find it's a little bit like it was unfair in my my last tournament I had where I could basically rally, turn around, move into position out of you know his way to charge me, and then shoot him with the gyrocopter. Like it, it was, it just seemed mm-hmm. pretty overpowering for me just to be able to do these sort of like flee, rally, move, shoots. Um, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, in certain situations, it seemed like it was a little bit overpowered, I thought. Um, the only other one I was going to say as well is the the one-inch rule. I was a little bit unsure with this. I was wondering how you guys are going to interpret this. So, um, so it's acceptable uh, that at the end of movement, it's one inch between units, between obviously yourself and the enemy. Um, but you can nudge. So mm, I was like... yeah. <laughs> How, how does that work if, like, you've got two units together and somebody, and you're trying to say, all right, I'm going to put these two units together, maybe an inch and a half apart, and he can't fit his flyer in, but it's, you fly in. Does that mean you have to nudge apart? Well, that, that's what it's like, oh. Yeah, I mean, technically, yeah. I I think if you go... Because it said no players get an unfair advantage, but it doesn't say you can't do it. So it's just like... You kind of almost. I'd say no, because I thought there was a place that talked about that you can't come within an inch if you haven't declared a charge or something like that. But I was just wondering if it, it's more in the ebb and flow of stuff through, you know, mm. give grounds and stuff that you, you you can nudge apart just to make sure there's an inch. But yeah, often a unit will have to move have to move within one inch of another unit during its move. This is perfectly acceptable, provided that at the end of the movement there is one inch. Because I was sort of interpreting that as, well, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. No unit can end its movement within one inch of an enemy, quite simply, with the exception of units engaging combat. So I guess, you know, if you haven't declared a charge in combat, you couldn't fly one inch. You couldn't, thing in you couldn't the get into a it. One inch yeah, thing yeah. And go, hey, you guys have to nudge. Yeah, no. Yeah, I it's suppose. Yeah, for charging. Flow. Um, yeah, you know, yeah. I've probably read that wrong. Back yeah. Or, it's generally yeah. probably fleeing like where it hasn't fully bumped through, but it's landed like half an inch away, yeah. you know, then you probably start like, okay, we'll just nudge. Yeah. 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 No, that makes, yeah. makes a bit more sense than the whales reading it. Anybody else have yeah, a miss? I, I agree with you about the rail. You know, I didn't realize that was in this section, but I found it and yeah, that's, mm. um, it's, it's a bit too much freedom. I feel like not a penalty yep. for rallying as such. Yeah, and that and that's what makes yeah. that fallback one even worse because yeah, basically that's that's a rally, an automatic yeah. rally, so you can do other mm. stuff. Yeah, so you can still yeah. shoot and move around and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't mind. I don't mind. Maybe if it was a little bit less restrictive, like like I don't mind the ability just to move. Like at least you're not yeah, losing standard. that unit so yeah. much. But yeah. yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, just but not sh- a, yeah, like shoot. a march move, like a march and a shoot to me is a bit yeah. Mm. One of my movement misses is in the maneuver section. Uh, and to be honest, I can't remember what eighth did now. Um, this is more six than all the other editions. The turn move. I just like <laughs> it's to me, it's just uh, like any this game's already full of like, you know, re, you know, reforming or oh, sorry, redressing ranks and stuff. And I feel like mm. it's so annoying turning a unit and then going, oh, by the way. And even in this case, this example here, it's gone from you know, combat order to marching column by turning, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> and it just, there's so many, like, annoyances that I reckon you'd be missed if, you, if you're not, like, aware of it. You know what I mean? Um, mm. People just, was ninth, was eighth just always just a full turn, there, like the whole unit, like a pivot? I can't remember. It must have been. In eighth. Like, you should uh, have a remember. turn like this, I don't think. This was more sixth and seventh and... Yeah, um, I'm not sure because you used to get your um, 
if you had the was it the musician you could do your your swift um, reform yeah swift reform yeah yeah, yeah i just yeah, I, I, to me it's just a little bit more counting and moving things around and changing ranks like if you did it properly i think most people half the time won't so they'll just go oh, yeah. i'll move my standard over here and everyone's facing the wrong way and all this sort of crap and it just it's just mm. ugly yeah. um I'd almost just rather say, nah, you can do a pivot, like a 90 degree pivot is is a move. But then again, going back to this lion hammer stuff, it's like they're trying to make width more important. And then that's where the pivot becomes abusive because you can move yeah. so far when you're wide and doing a pivot. Yeah. Um, but certainly, yeah, I just, I'm not a big fan of the turn. Yeah, that's, that's random. <laughs> what about um the marching column? That's in here. Did anyone? any problems with marching column i don't i just haven't uh, i think it's one of these things that needs to be used more although i think it'll yeah. be abused a bit which i've already started to think about obviously with orcs but mm. i would have loved to have seen them use a different word for the normal move no one has never been done in warhammer before mm -hmm. but it would be nice if there was a different term rather than having move be either normal move or march and march being mm. march but no term for a normal move that's definitely not a march because that means every rule about moving has to define whether you can march or not. Yeah, you know gotcha. what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, if there yeah, was yeah, like yeah, a specific yeah. move, like a short move, you know, like or a march, yeah. not like move yeah. being a blanket term for both of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, I think it would have helped to clarify a lot of a lot of the time because you know it's often mm. like Ray is like, okay, so you can do a regular move from this, you know, spell. Can I march? Mm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's yeah. So annoying. No, no, I get it. Like, that's the same thing with drilled I minute mean, when it came on. Did it apply to this or when you did this or a charge move or a flea move? Like, you could have that, yeah. like short move, march move, flea move, mm. bloody, you know, charge move, you know, something like that. I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, any other misses? Um, oh, okay. So, this is more a rule book thing and diagram thing in this section. They, they need to get better at giving the diagrams that aren't just all straight ahead. <laughs> Everything's always just like a line straight ahead and or not not what the box is saying. Like this one, for example, where it's like, oh, you know, I'm going to put a diagram of this unit charging this other orc unit, but they didn't even have to wheel at all. They can just go straight ahead and it was a perfectly valid charge by the look of these diagrams. So it's, like, it's just like, Classic. Yeah. you know, it's just like, the issues, like we played like one or two games of Old World and already ran into some weird edge cases. And I'm like, how did they not like run into those edge cases to not write yeah. them down? Um, which is a bit frustrating. I sound like I'm really being bitchy now with the misses, but yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm you are. Really, <laughs> I feel like you're, you're overdoing it. <laughs> uh, I think they've just done some really good stuff in here. So it's just like the other little things that you're like, oh, they could just written this bit a bit better. Yeah. Um, yeah. How about some favourites? Yep, let's do that. Yeah, What's difficult your terrain around movement. Oh, love uh, it. Uh, How good is it? That's uh, so good. that's in mine. Terrain <laughs> rules it, charging. I got it in first. <laughs> oh, you did too. I wrote, love it. It's simple yet impactful. I like it. It's it such a good rule. It's minus yeah. one. That's it. Yeah, throw, yeah, minus, throw away your high dose. Yep. Yeah, it's not, it's not, it's, it's not overly restrictive, but it's still, it's still um, a yeah. major thing you've got to think about. Yeah. 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 And just, and it, you know, obviously it's tied into the terrain rules, but the fact that you can, it's impactful, but, and you can like, but you know, it makes you want to go into a forest and sit there and go, well, you can still see me and charge me, but if you do, like there's a chance you'll just fail it because you just yeah, roll yeah. that double one or, you know, one and two. And yeah. Um, yeah. so the only thing I, I What's your ruling on marching and through difficult terrain? Like, what is the figure? Like, if you're movement four, how far do you march through difficult terrain? Oh, I get what you're saying. What do you mean? As you read the rule. Well, it's it's minus one to your move characteristic. Yep. Yeah. So but wouldn't it be the march two? move is double your how, how move characteristic. So yeah. do you double it first and then minus it, or do you? No, I think you. No, I feel the like marching you'd only unit double can it. double its movement characteristic. So do you minus the one and then double your movement, or do you double? I would have thought one? that. I would have thought so. Yeah, I would have thought you'd you'd minus it and then double it. Mm. 
Because cool. then you're otherwise you're only minus you know once. Yeah, I, I mean that's a good question. <laughs> yeah, and I don't. I was trying what to find think? somewhere. Well, there's a there's a bit on special rules which is not related to that. It's somewhere else where it talks about like you apply the um the priority the modi- modifiers. Like the, yeah. the time you know the basically the multiplies oh, yeah. before you take the minuses but it's got nothing to do with a blanket rule i, I, I should have found this before i asked the question it's somewhere about special rules or something like that um and it's still not fully oh i think that's with characteristic tests actually it's in right back in the characteristic tests it talks about um it just feels like if it was a bit more broader it would have applied uh Modifying dice rolls to modify dice rolls, simply roll the dice and then add or subtract. If if the rules instruct you to divide a dice roll, no, that's that. Uh, yeah, so I can't find it. Someone will answer it in the rule book. But there was something about it, but it was more to do with just like the the characteristics and not. Yeah. Which I guess it is. It's a movement, so maybe. Yeah. Maybe it is. Uh, Ninety-seven page. Oh, maybe did you find it? Oh, characteristic test. Yes, here it is. Yeah. Uh, modifying. The rules will often call for characters to be modified. Do you simply add or subtract? Oh, no, that's just that. Yeah, well, they could have added that's into just... that bit and then said what you do when you multiply, but they don't yeah, have that. Yeah, priority of modifiers, yeah. Yeah, um, bod mass. Well, yes, yeah, but if you do bod mass, then you're timesing and then modifying it. So it would be... Your movement would be seven marching through a dangerous train. I'm not sure the bottom us actually applies in one. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. Like, I don't know. Anyway, like, does it does it need an FAQ or am I missing a bit of the rule book? Because that's the bit I get confused on. Oh, I think it might need an FAQ. Mm. Yeah. I think when we've done it, Andrew, we actually times down movement and then minus one so like you march seven through a forest if you're a movement four but I, again i don't know if that's right you know i feel like it's it's mis- i think if that was the case it'd be just minus one to your movement whereas it says your movement characteristic, characteristic. and i feel like yeah. uh, i really think it'd be minus one first before you double it intuitively mm. i don't know though that there's a rule there that specifies it but Oh, well, I'd be knows that, it, please, please let us know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that yeah. wasn't the purpose of this section, but yeah, that, the, it's still a win um, <laughs> in the sense that it is such a that part is such a simple like the terrain bit is such a simple rule, but makes it I think yeah, it's just useful. it's just it's just hit the nice sort of balance between useful but not overly game breaking the restrictive either. Like yeah. you know, yeah, a good balance. And it, you know, obviously, then it also ties into there's a lot of spells that add you know difficult terrain templates, and so it's, it's cool. Like yeah, the, you know, you can definitely play it for sure. Um, the other favorite thing uh, that I haven't got to use, but I feel like could become a better tactic, and maybe even to kill dragons occasionally. I mean, you have to make them flee. Is how ruthless the um, fleeing through enemy units thing is, where it's like, is it a four up you die, <laughs> something like that, like. I wonder how. Yeah, I think that's really rude. I think it's good though. It should yeah, be. Yeah, I'm saying it's a favorite. Like, I just feel like it's something yeah. that um, probably isn't seen enough tactically, and this, especially because there's fallback, which is a flea. You know, with the correct positioning of, say, cheapy chaff units sitting behind a unit that you know probably they're going to. Because a lot of units won't break, but they'll fall back in good order. So if you can position, say, like a, a unit of fast flying behind the unit that you know you're probably going to be able to make fall back in good order, mm. then they end up having to bump through and then... Don't you uh, lose a single wound? Oh, yeah, through. yeah. Well, it depends on what unit. So probably not dragon. Yeah, you're right. Uh, oh, oh, it's a single yeah. wound. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's the thing. It should be more... Unfortunately, it doesn't punish multi-wound models enough. Nah, oh, okay, much. right. Yeah. So, but yeah, for infantry though, yeah, like a good way to, yeah. to really hurt. Yeah. Infantry and yeah. cavern stuff, it really hurts. But Yeah, 100%. Yeah, monstrous infantry and dragons. You know, you might take one wound. Yeah, That's it. kind of thing. It's almost like you should roll the dice for each wound the model has. Oh yeah, that'd be dangerous. Yeah, that would be. That would be punishing. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, for like infantry cav, it's a good way to. It, I just felt like it's yeah, it's uh, can be pretty dangerous, and the fact that you can't break things is easy. I think it's probably could be used tactically, which I probably haven't seen enough people do it. But I mean, maybe you can't. Maybe it's just too hard to sort of work, you know, to plan for it, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, other favourites? What have you guys got? Anything? Oh, I got a couple. Um, so I I had the terrain rules like Josh had, um, and obviously you did. I had kind of just in general because I kind of like the the way that it's a lot written out. The only thing I don't like is they're kind of like for woods. They can be like you just work it out if they're like dangerous yeah, or difficult. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, yeah. But the one thing that I didn't like was um, that for dangerous terrain is you got to take a test no matter what movement. Um, Ross, I believe previously, which I liked, was uh, in other editions was it was like a march flee charge. You could just move yeah, your yeah. normal rate and not have to. I'm just thinking if somebody does get plonked with like a big thing, you know, dangerous terrain or whatever in front of them, not like from a vortex, I don't mind it. But if, mm. if you are playing dangerous terrain um, on, on a board, especially a big piece, it, it is quite limiting. Um, like you just have to take them or try and avoid it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, it, it would have been nice if you could just like, you know, normally move through it. But I yeah, guess that's you when might. you just great as difficult again it's going to depend on the terrain isn't it but i yeah. feel like templates you're probably trying to be dangerous you know like, exactly yeah, yeah yeah templates 100 but yeah just... yeah because it, yeah it gives you a way of playing around it doesn't it if you if it only happens when yeah, you march or charge or flee mm. yeah then it gives you a choice to mitigate it in a way and that adds sort of tactical um elements to it to the whole to the whole rule mm. um and also thematic I, too, I'd, you'd argue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, and I can't remember, I mean, the terrain section's down the back because so it's not here yet, but, um, you know, like no, ruins to and stuff. Gloom yet. Yeah, the ruins and stuff, are they, at the, like, like forests, are they, are they classes you choose or is there certain ones that are always dangerous? I can't remember in the, that aren't uh, forests and stuff. I just can't remember what's on there. I guess we'll get get to that in a later one. I had um, it's that. highlighted here, but that's got um, nothing to do with uh, this segment. But I did like this battlefield decorations. <laughs> yeah. Like, when I first read yeah, that, I went, cool. Um, it is because you can uh, yeah make your battlefields look a bit better, but still just move stuff around, which is yeah. Um, yeah, you can just put little little bits of you know yeah scenery here and there. Doesn't yeah. doesn't really matter. Yeah, uh, I like it. I had one more favourite. I don't know if anybody else had one. Um, some people might disagree with me. In fact, I'm sure there's quite a few that would. The charge declaration and reaction order, I do like mm -hmm. that you've got to declare oh. all of them and then you yeah. can make your mind up on your how you're going to react, not like the old shenanigans of I'll charge one unit and is my other unit going to charge? Like you yeah, don't know. which one you want to stand <laughs> and shoot to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like to yeah. me, like it's more of a bit of a realistic thing. Like, well, not that it's realistic. Yeah, it's but... supposed to be all simultaneous. Yeah, yeah, it'd be all sort yeah. of yeah coming out simultaneously. No, I agree. I actually did think of that one too, and then I thought to myself, I can't remember what it was like because that was six, definitely wasn't it? So it was like eighth, the only one that changed it, probably. I think so. Yeah, because yeah, sixth yeah. edition was like that, where it was just yeah, you should declare everything first, and then all your reactions. Um, yeah, I think eighth was sequential. Yeah. Mm. Which, which yeah, no, it's you... good. Um, mm. <clears throat> it's uh, what I've got to get used to is, and just because I just rush it, I end up like when I when I declare a flea or I have to flee, I end up rolling dice before <laughs> Andrew's got a chance to <laughs> say if he's going to do it. Or like, yep, uh, chase me or not. I've done that many times, and then yeah. like you just like you roll real bad, and you're like, oh damn it! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like I will pursue. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, no, nah, cool. I, I'm just having a look if I missed any others that are worth talking about in my list. Probably not. I think that's about it. I think overall they've done a good job. Like I said, I mean, it's a pretty complex game, so they're going to, mm. you know, mm. they're not going to get everything right. But um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's still that a few there's... things to be tightening, but yeah. 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 I mean, there's yeah. a lot of, they added a lot in there, didn't they? Especially the whole fallback and give grounds and stuff. So obviously there was going to be some issues um, with, the logistics of it when you actually put it on the table and start playing. So mm. hopefully uh, these things will get sorted out. Um, 
And there's not too many, I don't think. It's just, uh, there's just a couple of probably edge cases that people still run into every now and then. And just, you know, when then you go back to the rule book and you're trying to find where it is, sometimes it's a bit, can be a bit, a bit like right, reading some big tome. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Well, that's our section on that. So what have we got? Still got shooting, combat, psychology, universe, special. I mean, we can do whatever, but we'll probably cover some of those main parts and then I guess that'll be it. And what our overall sort of feelings for the game is, so, which is obviously positive. That's why we're doing this. So, mm. What have we got coming up then, guys, uh, this week? We're going to get a few more hobby hours in, um, potentially. I'm going to do a couple. I want to do at least a hobby hour this week if people are keen on YouTube, if you're listening. Um, and then I might try to do my first of my Castle Salt list building ones as well because before Ooh. I go away on, on Monday. Uh, which will be fun. And then I think you guys are going to try over the next week or so get a Bretonian faction review in now that Josh is back. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, once That's we work out the schedule, it's all good. Um, Josh, Josh we... is trying to manage expectations. <laughs> yeah. That's really fine. yeah. It is our most well, – I'm just going to go look at that vote. It didn't change, did it? It was still – we asked our Patreons and we had, yeah, 33% said Bretonians. But then they said Wood Elves next, so that's interesting. Uh, Dark Elves was only right near the bottom and we did it. But anyway, that's because <laughs> um, Sean, he, he reached out and I said, yeah, let's let's do it. So, um, and he's keen to do Wood Elves too, so we can always get him back for that, I yeah. guess. The Elf Man. Um, is. Yeah. He did High Elves as well, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, uh, he did our high up one. Yeah, the elf he does all things pointy ears. Yeah. Although he said he's like Andrew, he has many armies. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's fought a lot. So, yeah, he just paints all afflicted. them and plays them all well. <laughs> just, I just hoard them. I'm just good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. boxes. Cool. Okay. Well, we might. Uh, anything else you guys want to cover before I wrap up the show and let the, the uh, listeners get back to whatever they were doing? No, oh, yeah. no. Then we cover what we need to cover. Yeah. Oh, thank, been good. Yeah, thanks for coming on, guys. Thanks for uh, listening to another episode. Old World Fanatics episode. Yeah. If you enjoy our weekly hobby ramblings, we'd love a five-star review on your podcast software of choice. Or if you're watching, obviously, on YouTube, which a lot of you guys do, obviously, uh, please hit the like and subscribe button. Uh, click that bell to be notified of our latest videos. And once again, if you do um, feel like joining our Patreon, it's just over at patreon.com slash oldworldfanatics. Um, but otherwise, yeah, hit us up on our socials. We're always on the YouTube one. Um, and if you yeah, want to get in contact with us via email, it's just oldworldfanatics at gmail.com. But apart from that, um, thanks for listening to another episode of Old World Fanatics and we'll chat you on the next one. So see yeah. you. And for Josh and Andrew, we'll catch you next week. Yes, we will. Thanks, guys. Ciao.